new Sunday, and congratulations, sir. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's great to be back, and uh, couldn't be more honored and, and humbled to have the opportunity to serve with President-elect Donald Trump and to see the, the energy that he's brought, the leadership that he's brought to this effort since literally hours after the election uh, was called has been truly inspiring. As we just reported, the president-elect met with a wide range of people yesterday, everyone from Mitt Romney to Michelle Rhee. But so far, the, the people that he has appointed have all been loyalists and, frankly, all white men. Uh, my question, sir, is will we see a diversity of opinion in the Trump administration? And, frankly, will we see a diversity of gender and race? Well, clearly, the, the president-elect is a man who who knows his mind. He knows where he wants to take this country. He laid out an agenda to make America great again, to have America standing tall in the world, to revive the American economy. And, and he's going to surround himself with, with men and women uh, from uh, diverse backgrounds who are going to help him move that agenda forward. But I, I have to tell you, to, to, uh, to be alongside him in these meetings, to be here at, uh, at Trump National yesterday, to see men and women coming through with extraordinary backgrounds, another round of those today. We're, we have been uh, we have just been working at his direction headlong to bring together people from all across this country who will help him on day one to begin to move that that uh, agenda to, to really result in a, in a stronger and more prosperous America. And I, I couldn't be more honored to be a part of it, Chris. Well, let me see if I can get you to make some news, sir. Uh, someone close to the transition tells me that the meeting with Mitt Romney yesterday actually went better than expected, given their history with each other, and that he's now a contender for Secretary of State, although Rudy Giuliani may well be the, the front runner still, and that retired General James Mattis is, quote, likely for Secretary of Defense. And I want to put up a tweet that uh, Donald Trump sent out this morning. General James Mad Dog Mattis, who was being considered for Secretary of Defense, was very impressive yesterday, a true general's general. Sounds like he's got the job, sir. <laughs> well, well uh, uh, stay tuned as the president-elect works through all of those decisions. Uh, uh, I, I can tell you that uh, they'll be they'll be coming forward. I, I think you said it at the top of the show, though. It's uh, you know while while some in the national media were wringing their hands early this week, we've been working uh, from uh, literally hours after the election was called to move to move this transition forward. I'm honored to be serving as the chair of it, and uh, to have someone like General Mattis to sit before us yesterday, someone with a legendary military career, and to be able to talk to him about the challenges. Uh, facing America uh, and our national security, and and I can I can tell you that the president-elect uh, was very grateful uh, that uh, Governor Mitt Romney came in. Uh, they had a good meeting. It was a warm and a substantive exchange, and I know he's under active consideration uh, to be the Secretary of State of the United States, along with some other very distinguished Americans. Just one quick thing on Romney: Was there any talk about the terrible things they said about each other? Well. Uh, we, we spent about an hour together uh, with, uh, with the team, uh, the president-elect and I, uh, on one side of the table and some on the team uh, on the other side uh, with Governor Romney, and uh, we talked through a lot of substantive issues. They did have some private time together, and you can ask either one of them what they talked about. But look, these, these are two people uh, that earned their party's nomination. Uh, one was successful uh, and won a mandate from the American people earlier this month to make America great again. Another one uh, fought hard to do that uh, four years ago. And, and uh, I, I can just report to you that it, it, was a, it was a cordial meeting, but more importantly, the American people, it was a very substantive conversation. I know the president-elect was grateful uh, that Mitt Romney came, uh, came here to Trump National and spent some time in this willing to be considered for this important role at such an important time in the life of our nation. Well, let's talk about your role, because uh, the president-elect has made you the head of the transition. You seem, from your visits, uh, to be his main link to Congress. Some are comparing you to Dick Cheney, who played a big role in introducing another newcomer to Washington uh, back in 2000, uh, George W. Bush. What do you think of the Cheney comparison? Well, I, I have high regard for the service that Vice President Cheney provided uh, to the United States. But the person that will define my role is the president-elect of, the, of, uh, 
uh, of the United States of America. And what has he and, said about, uh, what I, I do he know said about my, that role? Uh, I mean, some people have said well, that he's going to be the CEO and you're going to be the COO, the chief operating officer. Well, let me be very clear. President-elect Donald Trump, uh, when he becomes president, Donald Trump on January 20th will uh, be the one leading the Trump administration, and I'll be providing uh, a supporting role. But I do think I do think the president-elect uh, uh, has, has a great appreciation for my relationships with members of Congress. He and I both went to Capitol Hill last week uh, and sat down with the leaders of the House and the Senate. You know, because part of this transition, uh, Chris, is not just surrounding. Uh, the president-elect with men and women from whom he can choose the personnel that will people in administration but we're also laying out an aggressive policy agenda uh, working uh, with leaders frankly uh, in in both chambers and and in both political parties I went back to Capitol Hill this week and not only met uh, with uh, Leader McConnell and, and Speaker Ryan but I also uh, was grateful to have the opportunity to sit down with uh, uh, Leader Pelosi and and uh, and and Leader Schumer. We we had a substantive conversation. We're working with the majorities in the House and Senate to move forward an aggressive agenda. Uh, decisions have been made that uh, by the president-elect that that he wants to focus uh, out of the gate on repealing Obamacare uh, and beginning the process of, of replacing Obamacare with the kind of free market solutions that he campaigned on. Uh, from there, we'll, we'll work on, on issues ranging from uh, ending illegal immigration, reviving our economy through tax reform, rebuilding the military, restoring the infrastructure of this country. Uh, but uh, but uh, I, I do hope to continue to play a supportive role to take uh, President-elect Donald Trump's agenda to Capitol Hill uh, and work with leaders, frankly, in both political parties to move the country forward and uh, make America great again. Well, let me uh, ask you about one potential flashpoint. We interviewed Senate Democratic Leader Schumer on Friday. He's going to be in our next segment. Uh, and he said that there's going to be a, quote, very thorough vetting of Donald Trump's choice for Attorney General, that's Senator Jeff Sessions. Uh, back in 1986, looking at the record, Sessions was rejected by the Senate as a federal judge because of troubling actions and statements on race. And as a senator, Sessions supported rolling back the Voting Rights Act and voted against laws to protect gays and guarantee equal pay for women. Uh, the question is, are you prepared to fight Democrats to make Sessions the nation's chief law enforcement officer. I, I think I think everyone who knows Senator Jeff Sessions knows that he's he's going to be an outstanding attorney general. He is a, a man of integrity. Uh, he stood shoulder to shoulder with our president-elect through this campaign, uh, championing not only the rule of law but confronting the scourge of illegal immigration. And for for many Americans, this is a very anxious time relative to the Justice Department and. And they know that Jeff Sessions will restore integrity there. And I, and what I, and what I about that record when it comes someone, to what about that record when it comes well, to race I, and gays and women? Yeah. Well, I'm 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 very confident that in the course of the confirmation hearings that uh, that uh, that his record in its totality will come out. This is a man who prosecuted the KKK. Uh, uh, in his own home state, this is someone who demonstrated personal courage, and I think you're going to see you're going to see an outpouring of support uh, from diverse voices, including the African American community, in his home state and across the country. I'm, I'm very confident Senator Jeff Sessions will be the next Attorney General of the United States. During the campaign, uh, Donald Trump attacked Hillary Clinton for blurring the lines with the Clinton Foundation. Here's what he said. It is impossible to figure out where the Clinton Foundation ends and the State Department begins. It is now abundantly clear that the Clintons set up a business to profit from public office. But, Governor, now there's heavy criticism from all sides about Donald Trump's intention to turn over the, his real estate empire to his children. And the argument is that any company, any foreign government that wants to curry favor with the president will just make a deal with the Trump organization. In fact, one top Republican said to me, this could, could be the Clinton Foundation on steroids. How do you deal with that? Well, I'm, I'm very confident uh, working uh, with, uh, with the, the best legal minds in the country that 
that the president-elect and his family uh, will create the proper separation uh, from his business as he goes forward. But look, I mean, one of the reasons why Donald Trump just won a mandate from the American people, win winning states that Republicans hadn't won for a generation, is because he brought that business background. He didn't come out of a, a long political career. He came out of a career building things, creating things, well, well, creating sir, jobs. Well, sir, I understand. I understand I'm, I'm that. very confident. Well, He's say, very confident that they'll, we'll, we'll be able to create the proper separation. And, but, but it's not just and, uh, a legal and, question. And I will tell you that, that let me just, he's let me, if completely I may just focused ask a question, on the people's business. If I may just ask a question, sir, briefly, if his kids are running the business, he's and, and if we're talking about buildings here, if he doesn't divest himself of the business, a lot of people are saying turn it into cash, he's going to know uh, who, what the, who the kids are doing business with. In fact, there was just a meeting in the last few days with some of his business partners from India. Doesn't that create a tremendous danger of a conflict of interest? Well, I, I can tell you, in, in a recent interview after the election, uh, the president-elect uh, summed up his view of his interest in his business life with two words. He said, who cares? Uh, and I, I can tell you, sitting shoulder to shoulder with him through these interviews, watching him talk to world leaders on the phone one after another from hours after the election, uh, the president-elect of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, is completely focused on the people's business. And I, I promise you, and I can, I can assure the public, that uh, they'll, they'll have the proper separation uh, from their business enterprise. Uh, you know, you've met all of his kids. They are extraordinary men and women, uh, fully capable of uh, leading that enterprise. And uh, I know he's going he's gonna to lead America with 110 percent of his focus. Finally, I've got about a minute left, and I've got to ask you about the subject everybody is talking about today. You know what it is, and that is the fact that you went to see the Broadway musical Hamilton on Friday night. And afterwards, uh, the cast addressed you as you were walking out of the theater about their concerns as to whether Mr. Trump will protect diversity in our nation. Here he is. We truly hope that this show has inspired you to uphold our American values and to work on behalf of all of us. All of us. Now, Saturday morning, Mr. Trump tweeted this. The cast of Hamilton was very rude last night to a very good man, Mike Pence, apologized, and he tweeted about it again at 623 this morning. Governor, what did you think of the cast comments, and did you consider it rude? Well, first off, uh, my daughter and I and her, and her uh, cousins really enjoyed the show. Hamilton is just an incredible production, and... Uh, uh, incredibly talented people and uh, it, it was a real joy to be there and you know when we arrived we heard we heard a, a few boos and we heard some cheers and I nudged my kids and reminded them that's what freedom sounds like and uh, uh, but at the end I you know I, I, I did hear what was said uh, from the stage and I can tell you I, I wasn't offended by by what was said I'll leave to others whether that was the appropriate venue to say it but I, I do want to say that um, that uh, the, the basic element, the, the center of that message is one that I, I, I want to address, and that is I, I know this is a very disappointing time for people that, that did not see their candidate win in this national election. I know this is a very anxious time for some people, and I just want to reassure people that what President-elect Donald Trump said on election night, he absolutely meant from the bottom of his heart. He is preparing to be the president of all of the people of the United States of America. Uh, and to watch him uh, bringing together people of, of diverse views, uh, bringing together people that differed with him strongly, seeing him talk to leaders around the world, I, I, just, want to, I just want to reassure every American uh, that, that in, in the days ahead, I'm very confident uh, that they're going to see, they're going to see President-elect Donald Trump be a president uh, for all of the people and, and we embrace that principle and we're going to work hard to make that principle every day that we serve. And just to button Hamilton Gate up, do you want or expect an apology? Well, I, I, as I said, I would just, I would leave that to others whether that was the appropriate uh, venue for that. but. Uh, you know, I, I will tell you, Chris, if you haven't seen the show, go to see it. It is a great, great show. And, you know, and I'm a, I'm a real history buff. And so I, my daughter and I and her cousins really enjoyed it. Well, so uh, <laughs> I've seen it, too. So we can say Pence and Wallace, two thumbs up. Governor Pence, we want to thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Always good to talk with you, sir. Thank you.